Welcome to another edition of the 49er Goldcast. San Francisco, are you ready? Bam! Welcome to another edition of the 49er Goldcast. We are the voice of the faithful. I'm your host, Rudy Solis III, and with me is my brother, my co-host, Raymond Solis I, baby. And our esteemed co-host, Old Man Davis. Boom! Gentlemen, I thought we were done. I thought, you know, we'd have like a, a month off, two months off. I thought I was going to hear from you guys till the draft. But lo and behold... Like the mafia, just when we think we're out. The 49ers pull us right back in. Indeed they do. With some uh, big news for the San Francisco 49ers. Some very gutsy shopping there. Yeah, a controversial and polarizing and definitely noteworthy coaching hire, Mr. Chip Kelly. They have hired Chip Kelly as the next head coach. He's coming to San Francisco as the official coach of the San Francisco 49ers. Pretty crazy. Breaking news. The San Francisco 49ers have their 20th head coach. It is Chip Kelly. He was someone that was predicted early on by several analysts and mainstream journalists and media. As you guys all know, I was uh, the head captain of the Sean Payton campaign, and clearly our campaign did not deliver on the expectation as promised. I'm sure New Orleans was asking for a steep price that clearly nobody was willing to pay. Yeah, that definitely seemed like it. Old Man Davis, what do you think about Chip Kelly? When you have great coaches, when you have great coaches, you get great players. You have a great organization, and you tell them one thing. Just win. Just win. Well, first off, let's get to how the gold cast felt about chip kelly prior to the season over for the san francisco 49ers that's what i mean silence nobody was thinking (laughs) chip kelly a big inhale and a big exhale (sighs) and letting it absorb in into a week already since the announcement this is very bold and gutsy jed york's part To make a decision, a gutsy call like this, to pick a risky, scary hire like former Eagles coach Chip Kelly. I really feel that this was maybe the right move at this time, considering all the candidates that were interviewed that had legitimate coaching skill sets. And was it maybe not the best, but it was the right hire at the right time, considering all that walked away from the 49ers. Adam Gase, Sean Payton, Hugh Jackson, and all the other ones that were making national headlines, but the 49er organization just chose to not look at them any further. You got a lot of problems, don't you? If I'm Jed York, this says I'm responsible for what happened last season. I'm the CEO of the 49ers. I care about winning with class. I'm not afraid of taking a chance when future is questionable. And Chip Kelly is our guy this year. hoo There it is. Raymond, what do you think about Chip Kelly? Is this a good hire? You know, when they first started the search, I was... Oh. Uh, you were tired? I was very tired. When they, You know, when the 49ers first started the search, I was thinking... And he was actually the first person they interviewed, and it wasn't reported until after the interview concluded. They kept this interview process very, very close to the vest. And when I first heard that he got interviewed, you know, my immediate, you know, inclination was no. <laughs> Don't go that route, you know. Let's let's look at all the candidates, which is clearly what they did. They weren't gonna they weren't gonna settle until they interviewed everybody because That was clearly the goal. Let's interview all the top candidates that they like, which they did. And when everything was said and done, I was surprised. You know, once Hugh Jackson came off the table, I really didn't know who was next. I figured they would go for a veteran like Mike Shanahan or something like that, which, you know, according to reports, he was it was either Kelly or Shanahan were kind of the two top candidates. Both have experience. One has a previous winning pedigree within the NFL. The other one has a new young infant winning pedigree within the NFL. However, one of them hasn't won in over 10 years, and that was Mike Shanahan. So it was hard to – I think that was a hard one to justify just because he hasn't been relevant ever since parting ways or, you know, having to keep going without 
John Elway who retired after his two wins. So, but when I look at every, when I look at the facts, because I'm like, all right, what happened in Philadelphia? Let's figure it out. When I look at all the facts, I look at what Kelly's done before the NFL and during the NFL. I think there's a lot of upside if this coach learned from his mistakes in Philadelphia. If he doesn't, we're just going to repeat history. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. But if he did, he did figure out that, hey, you don't need all the power. And B, you can't plug and play people into your system like it, like as if it were college. It doesn't work that way. In the NFL, you need talent. And you need talent to stay in those positions in order to sustain long-term success and compete. So in my opinion, it's a gutsy call. It's clearly swinging for the fences. And there's really only one way to find out if this is going to work out or not. I see a lot of parallels to the Jim Harbaugh hire. You have a coach who has a strong personality, has a big ego, just like Jim, just like Jim Harbaugh. And the question is, if he sees success – Good success within his first few few years. Is he going to revert back to this kind of power hungry phase that he went through quickly in Philadelphia? Because clearly that didn't work. So well, I don't not know. Gonna be able to, you're not going to be able to wrestle the way the team away from Trent Baalke, as we've already seen with Jim Harbaugh. I think it's a gutsy call too. I'm curious to see what he's going to do with the read option. I'm curious to see if he's going to keep Colin Kaepernick or if he's going to go with playing Gabbert. I'm curious to see how the players and personnel are going to react to that bold personality that you mentioned earlier. He definitely has that reputation. I'm uh, curious to see what this season is going to bring. I pretty, I'm pretty confident that we are not going to repeat the same win loss record that we had this year. The San Francisco 49ers, uh, played a poor football game. I and, think at least we go eight, eight and eight. Yeah, I think we definitely make an improvement in that category. And I think that, you know, during the interview, obviously all of these concerns we had, I think in some form or another were tactfully addressed during the interview because they don't, Niners don't want to go down that path again. Chip Kelly doesn't want to get fired again. He wants to win, but he knows that he has to make some changes on his end in order to make that happen. And, you know, conversely, so does uh, Trent Balky and Jed York. So they want to find this this harmony. So uh, I think that that was clearly addressed in the interview process because both sides know that, hey, Chip Kelly wanted a shot. No one was knocking on Chip Kelly's door aside from the 49ers because I believe he kind of scared everyone with what happened in Philadelphia, and rightfully so. However, the point is this guy is endorsed by people like Bill Belichick, who, guess what, who had three losing seasons when he first started to head coach, and that was with the Browns. And, and look at who had to, who he had to work with in Philadelphia. Michael Vick, Nick Foles, Mark Sanchez, Sam Bradford, Matt Barkley. All those guys excelled in that system. And I think that's what was kind of where Chip Kelly got a little bit overconfident, where his coaching skills were clearly at a level where he can make players better. But you can't necessarily do that to all your positions. You need skill players. So if he can do that with players that are not as – athletic or have as much upside as, say, a Colin Kaepernick or, to a lesser degree, Blaine Gabbert, then I'm extremely curious to see what's going to happen to this offense that was about as entertaining as a fire hydrant last year. Oh, man, Davis, your thoughts? Um, just to further add that, you know, the Eagles in his first season as head coach went 10-6 and six from Andy Reid's last season with the Eagles at 4-12. and 12. Uh, That was an inherited team. He then, in his second season, went 10-6 and six again. Uh, it only became evident when given full control of personnel that things went south for him, and we saw that this past season. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? The only thing I could say is the upside. One of the great upsides of this hire is he does not have the personnel control. So Trent keeps his job this upcoming season, by still having retained his personnel hiring duties. And it's up to Chip Kelly to use those pieces, what he knows best, X's and O's, and apply that to the game of football. And he does that in 16 games, and with this upcoming 49er schedule to look at. 8-8 eight and eight is an optimistic look at how the season might end for them this upcoming season. But I'd like to say, let's just hope five and eleven. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off for my prediction because I want to see 
what happens in free agency and in the draft, and then I'll have a better idea on what can potentially happen in the regular season. Yeah, great point, Ray. I mean, whoa, 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 dra- whoa. draft we picks, just throw me out the free window. agency. I'm just making an educated guess based on very little education. I'm not. Say- I'm not saying you can't or, or that or that it's wrong. I'm just saying I'm exercising my right to refrain for now, just because I want to see a little. I want to see what kind of what the new talent is that we're working with because we don't the roster that it exists now from last season will not be the same. Nope. And if if I have if I have a look at those players, I can sort of have a better gauge for what's happening. That's part of the whispers. It's not all whispers. It's scientific whispers. 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 I mean, what we saw in Philadelphia, you saw big name players getting released and they went ahead and put their Thoughts. They put lesser players in for more money in some places. And, uh, you know, players that just Chip Kelly didn't see fit into his uh, offense or defense defensive teams. And what you got was the Philadelphia Eagles of last season. So this is the case where we probably will not see a lot of 49ers maybe being wearing red and gold jerseys. We'll see. I feel like. And from the sound of the articles that we've read, it does appear as though Chip Kelly had an interest in Colin Kaepernick and that he was very much interested in working with him. I'm curious if they retain him. According to what it looks like, even if they retain him, he doesn't actually create that large of a dent in in the salary cap. It looks like they they pretty much have vanquished most of the dead money this year. So – um, this coming year, or you know, the the season that just passed, this coming year, it looks like they're going to have a lot more money, and having cap on the books doesn't really hurt them. I, I, I but I really don't know. You know, we always say, Fort Niner faithful, we're we're just fans, we're not analysts. You know, we're not professional analysts, we're not paid to look at stats all day, and we don't have a team of people feeding us stats. Uh, so I don't actually know whether or not he's going to retain cap, but it. I think it's an interesting experiment no matter what. And given his track record thus far, I see that I kind of was adding what you were just saying, Raymond, that Blaine Gabbard or Colin Kaepernick, there is a there is a really strong chance that either will thrive or both will thrive in this new Chip Kelly system. I think Colin stays, in my opinion. I, I think, think Colin outside. leaves. I think he, I think they get rid of him. I think he stays just because – you know, they invested a lot of money in him. Yes, it was a team friendly contract. However, um, you don't necessarily, you know, you have to take, there are certain parts to the last two seasons that rest on Kaepernick's shoulders. And there's other aspects of the supporting cast around him for the past two seasons that you can also make a case for his regression. Cause it wasn't just a, you know, it wasn't a independent regression. He, he had a regression because of, some psychological factors and, and it also had to do with some supporting cast factor or lack thereof. And that's why I'm not sure. And with Chip Kelly in there, knowing that he excels with some of the quarterbacks who don't have his preferred skill set, guess what? Kaepernick has all of his preferred skill sets and they're all off the charts. He's the best candidate to run his type of system. Blaine Gabbard is too, to a lesser degree and not that, not that much less either. Blaine Gabbard's more than capable of doing it, too. So I think with the Niners, that was also a topic of discussion, too, which would also lead me to believe that the, the comments Trent Baalke made uh, before the season ended while Kaepernick was was injured and going through his surgeries was that he's still in the plan. Kaepernick is still part of the plan and the Niners in 2016. And now it becomes even more valid, I feel, with the hiring of Chip Kelly versus if it was somebody different. So, uh, I think that's just a bunch of PR on Trent's part. I think uh, they threw uh, number seven under the bus halfway through the season, and that was obviously evident. And uh, they're prepared to move on unless Chip Kelly co-signs for number seven. And ultimately, Chip Kelly will have to answer if number seven is an ultimate failure once again. Well, here's the yeah. thing. This is a guy who... This is not your show, Rudy. I know. I say every, every time I try to speak, get run over. The thing about Chip Kelly, one of the things his system thrives on is read option. And read option, as we've seen, is working very well in certain systems, in, in the Panther system, in the Seahawks system. So 
I think it is realistic to see a Colin Kaepernick thriving in this system because that's where he comes from. That's what he's good at. And like you just said, I mean, he's out of all the quarterbacks out there, with the exception of probably Cam, he's physically built the best for read option in the NFL right now. You know, he's built for it better than just about anybody. I'd say Cam is the only other guy that that comes as close to, to him athle- athletically. And like like I pointed out in 2014, Kaepernick still surpassed uh, his career best in three uh, three categories, three three of like the five major quarterback categories. And he, according to Bill Barnwell in his ESPN article, Cap finished 11th in total QBR at 62.2 over the final eight weeks of the 2014 year. That was the year he was also sacked. Uh, he was, he's played the whole year and he was sacked more than any other quarterback in the NFL. You know, it's, it's hard to justify him being done. He can, he can clearly start somewhere else if he doesn't stay with the 49ers. But in my mind, I just don't see them eating that money like they're going to eat with Tom Sula, which is more digestible than a player's contract salary. Well, they have until April to make a decision and, uh, they could potentially save up to 11 million. And that's pending a physical. If he doesn't pass the physical, he's guaranteed. That money's guaranteed. He is pretty banged up. You know, gentlemen, I think the real question for the gold cast and the real question for the faithful is Chip Kelly, halfway through the season, will he still be coach Chip Kelly or will he be Kip Chelly? Mm. As we all know, what happens to a gold cast coach when they start messing around and what we do to them? Well, is he he just kind of follows suit in Tim Jomsula's shoes? Then, yeah, he's going to earn a... A mockery of his name. Chip, 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 butter chip. (laughs) But if he turns things around, even better than five, then maybe we can call him... Chocolate chip, chocolate chip Kelly. Chocolate chip Kelly, yeah. Chocolate chip city. Or white chocolate chip Kelly. Oh man, Davis, are you eating during the, the gold cast? No, I was just inspired eating a chocolate chip. Reminded me of Chip Kelly. I would just have this last thing to say. If anything, like I was just saying earlier, this uh, it something had to be decided early just to obviously move forward with uh, what the 49ers have to do in their long list of reload or reset. I'm gonna call either this word reload, you want to use. Reset, reboot, reboot, recycle, whatever. Uh, this is definitely a move that helps put the burden back onto the head coach. Now Chip Kelly, and less on Jed York. Jed Dork. Everybody saw what was going on anytime Jed was typing away with his fingertips. Banners were flying across Levi Stadium. T-shirts were banned from the stadium. Fuck Jed York. Oh snap! Here's the right? thing: if, if Kelly's so bad, then why are coaches? From the Philadelphia Eagles, who were on his staff throughout those first three years, jumping ship to come work with him in San Francisco, including wide receivers coach Bob Bicknell and quarterbacks coach Ryan Day, who is That's exciting, I, who I believe is going to be the offensive coordinator or quarterbacks coach, one of the two. I, I'd like to see a, a Vernon Davis resign. <laughs> that bridge has been burned. That ship has sailed. <laughs> Yeah, blow that sucker up. All right, well, we are going to briefly take a little look at the playoffs since we're here. We're, the gold cast is here. We're, we're, we're back. We're on. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. If you're looking for the latest and greatest 49ers podcast, then look no further than right here, the 49ers gold cast. Funny, passionate, and simply the best. The 49ers Goldcast is the only podcast that represents the Bay Area fan perspective. Hosted by Rudy Solis III, that's me, Raymond Solis I, and Old Man Davis. That's him. (laughs) The 49ers Goldcast is the voice of the faithful. You can download the latest episode of the 49ers Goldcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash 49ers gold cast. All right, gentlemen. Well, we're almost completely done. My favorite round of the playoffs ended today. The divisional round. Old man Davis. Unfortunately, your predictions did not come true. We are not getting a Kansas City Pittsburgh Steelers AFC championship, but we are getting 
a Denver Broncos New England Patriots game for like the billion time. And we are getting the Carolina Panthers versus the Arizona Cardinals. Notice there is no Seattle Seabirds in there. This is Russell Wilson country. And this, Russell Wilson air. You see that? Whose bird is that? That's Russell Wilson's bird. Bye bye. You like them apples? Ain't that right, Russell Wilson? It's not easy to get to the Super Bowl. He can't hear you. them apples. He's crying. He's crying. He's crying himself to sleep. I think I got enough motivation already. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it this way on that team. They were one no call away in the Detroit game from not even making it. They lost to the Rams two weeks before it even before the before they went into the playoffs. The only reason they were even in the divisional round is because of the that stupid kick in Minnesota. They had no business being in this round. They were pure like it just luck just broke their way. And in that first half of the game, they really proved why they had no business being there. Granted, I will give them that second half comeback. They made some strong adjustments, but it was too little, too late. That Russell Wilson pick six came back to haunt them, and that was the amount of points that ended up being the dagger. You're not that good. You can't do this. You can't do that. That's when I put the extra work in. Thank God. Yeah, old man. Russell sack, Russell sack of potatoes. Russell sack of potatoes. Russell, muscle, tussle, hustle, and bustle. Uh, old man Davis, what do you think about the AFC? We now have Patriots versus Broncos. What do you think? Well, you're right, Rudy. I was totally blown away by the AFC winners past week. We saw the Steelers almost get there, but just didn't have it. And uh, I didn't. nobody saw Antonio Brown go out with the concussion uh, against the Bengals. So... That very well ruined my chances of seeing the Steelers in the conference championship. As far as the uh, Patriots, hey, what can you say? Belichick and uh, Brady know how to win. B and B. And uh, yeah, for the nth million time, Patriots and Broncos. I'm gonna reboot my predictions. I'm gonna say Panthers and Patriots. As it should be. Panthers and Patriots. But just to uh, end off that the AFC uh, teams really just came down to how those teams fared off. And the Broncos, they played an excellent uh, season. Uh, They ended up going uh, into the playoffs with uh, Peyton Manning as their quarterback of choice. They didn't look back on that. The champion New England Patriots just know how to get a win, know how to play playoff games. And that's why they're both going to the conference championship. Sure, uh, Raymond. What do you think? Who's going to win the AFC championship? You know, I feel like Denver doesn't have enough offensively to do it, but uh, you know, logic would tell me that New England would would do this, even though they're playing in Denver. However, I'm going to go ahead and go against uh, my gut and just say that Denver pulls off the upset and go ahead and goes to the Super Bowl. However, I'm on the NFC side. Uh, I feel that it's very much Carolina's year. Oh. I disagree with both of you. I am in agreement with old man Davis that the Patriots go. I, I just feel like it, that there's just no way. I just, I mean, I don't see, see Denver getting past New England. I feel like Belichick just has Peyton's number. I think there's no way they win that game. I think the New England Patriots win and return. And I believe the Arizona Cardinals will defeat the Carolina Panthers. I think they're the better team. I think the second half really kind of showed where, where they're at. I think that uh, Bruce Arians is a better coach. And Ron Rivera, and I think that he, he, I think he even has what it takes to beat Belichick. I think that the, I think both teams on the NFC side are better than New England. Uh, it's just a matter of beating Belichick. He, he will do anything to win. So we all know what that means. So that's that's my prediction, though. Arizona versus New England. I don't want it to be. I really don't want it to be Denver. Denver versus uh, I don't care who they play on the NFC side, but I really would like to see Peyton win last one last one um, and then walk off into the sunset a la 
John Elway style and, and just be done. Just put that horse out to pasture. If he does win, I think he'll retire. It's uh, Omaha is a um, it's a run play that, but it could be a pass play. Yeah, and then it's a great ending to a, a really a, a good but tough story. I think uh, I think Ron Rivera and the Panthers are going to take the second half and utilize that as a learning lesson uh, into the NFC Championship game because you can't you don't want to be in that position against the Arizona Cardinals who not only play um, pretty sound defense just as well as Seattle maybe a notch below but uh, they're down their best corner so that helps that helps Cam Newton's cause but at the same time uh, are a much better offense than. Seattle. However, um, they did not play very well against Green Bay, who definitely brought their A game on on the uh, on the defensive side of the football. And Carolina is the best defense in the NFL and the top scoring defense in the NFL. And I just don't see Carson Palmer. This is his first time in the big show. Same with Cam Newton, but uh, I just feel like Carson Palmer has got more. He's more prone to give up the game than Cam Newton will be. Mm. He's not as deep a physical threat, but he is a, a very good, confident quarterback. We'll see, gents. Hey, I just want to see Cam Newton do the dab every time he scores a touchdown. Touchdown giveaways. Watch ice cubes melt and watch Cam Newton's touchdown. Where, where is this whole, where is this whole dab thing? You know, I feel so old right now. What's, what's, the, what's the deal with the dab? I don't know. It's something Cam does. I think, thinks it's cool. Is that something he made up? It's a dance, baby. My great, great, great grandchildren are dabbing and Vine. <laughs> I didn't even know you knew what Vine was. Oh man, Davis. These kids, they just tell me about it, so. uh probably one of the most inspiring things for me to come back to life for there you have it <laughs> there you are all right that concludes our playoff talk for the evening don't forget to check out our final gold cast press conference for the year it took place after the rams game we had, as you know the, the gold cast sometimes puts out some Press conferences. We talk to the press. You know, we have always everyone asking us a lot of questions about what the Goldcast is doing, uh, the voice of the faithful, the Bay Area fan perspective. So we have one more video up. Be sure to check it out. It's on our Facebook fan page. And if you're subscribed to YouTube, it's on the YouTube channel as well. Be sure to check out our final Goldcast press conference for the year. Raymond, where can they find us? You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash 49ers Goldcast. You can also follow us on Twitter at 49ers Goldcast. I highly recommend that you also subscribe to us via iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. That way you will be on top of the latest and greatest episodes from the 49ers Goldcast as they become live to the public. Bam! Raymond, where can they find you? You can follow me on Twitter at Ray Solis as well as Instagram at Ray Solis One. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rudy Solis Third Three R D. Rudy Solis Third. Old Man Davis, where can they find you? The rest of this year, uh, up until preseason, you can probably find me in uh, Cam Newton's shoe or possibly under my son Mark Davis's hair, where I'll be waiting patiently uh, for Super Bowl 5-0 at Levi Stadium. Other than that, uh, old man Davis is going to be looking for a new home. Are you homeless? A proud silver and black. <laughs> That's true. Raider Nation. <laughs> That's true. The Rams are coming to L.A., which means once a year, The 49ers are coming to L.A., and boy, am I looking forward to that. Cannot wait. I'm so excited. Well, gentlemen, so concludes another edition of the 49er Goldcast. We are the voice of the faithful. I'm your host, Rudy Solis III, and with me is my brother, my co-host, Raymond Solis I, baby. And our esteemed co-host, Old Man Davis. Boom! We'll see you next time. Same Goldcast time, same Goldcast channel. Simply the best! Okay, okay, okay. That's a good way. We ended, we ended by champs. Bay Area! And we're back again. Ha 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 